So how do we actually generate a genome sequence? The first thing we have to do is we have to grow some bacteria. And this plate that my student's holding here has some colonies of Vibrio on it. And you can either grow them on a solid plate like this, or you can grow them in liquid culture. The next step is we extract the DNA. And I'm not going to talk about exactly how we do that, but we end up with a clear solution, like the one that I've shown here, that contains DNA. We do a library prep step, as I've talked about in other sections. And then we run the DNA sequencer. And that gives us a file of FASTQ format DNA sequences. So that's the sort of biology, the lab part of the work. You can get somebody else to do that. It's pretty trivial. Honestly, you can go from having a culture to having DNA sequences in eh, a day or so. It's not so hard to do. So having got the DNA sequences, now we're into the interesting bioinformatics part of things. And there are several steps that we're going to work through over the course of the next series of lectures as we analyze and annotate a genome sequence. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our FASTQ format files and we're going to assemble the fragments into contigs. And so we'll talk about how we do this sequence assembly. This is the idea where we take these short reads we join them up in overlaps, and we end up with larger sequences. In an ideal situation, when we do this, we end up with the whole genome sequence as one big circle. The next thing we do is we identify the open reading frames. All right, so we've got a couple of new terms here. We've got contigs and we've got open reading frames. Open reading frames are usually abbreviated as ORFs. Just as a reminder, if you look at the computational genomics manual, which is on GitHub, there's a page of definitions. So if I throw out words like contigs or open reading frames or pegs, or polypeptides, and you think, what on earth is he talking about? If you go to the computational genomics manual, you can take a look at the definitions, and there's some definitions there of the terms that I'm going to use as we're talking about sequence technology. So after identifying the, the open reading frames, the next step is to identify the tRNA genes. These are transfer RNA. And we'll talk about exactly what it is that transfer RNA genes do when we get to the point of identifying them. Next, we're going to identify the ribosomal RNA genes. These are ribosomal RNA. The fifth step in our analysis of our genomes is to functionally annotate the genome. And so what this means is we're going to take each of the open reading frames, each of the tRNAs, and each of the rRNAs, and we're going to identify what they do. So what is it that those enzymes are doing, those proteins are doing? Are they doing biochemical reactions? Are they helping the cell grow? What's going on there? And then the last step that we'll get to in the class is we'll integrate some metabolic modeling. And so we'll try and build a little computational model that says, in these conditions, this bacteria can grow. In those conditions, this bacteria can't grow. So we'll have gone from a bacteria where we've got it growing on a plate all the way through 
the steps of genome analysis until we get to the end where we have a little model that we can test to see does our model grow computationally.